finance and investment and business because there's a uh, direct kind of financial payoff for valuable information in those subjects. But it could also apply more broadly and certainly our experience with Crikey, which is largely about um, politics and media and business and social issues, uh, is that we have about 14,000 subscribers who pay $150 a year, um, that they are prepared to pay for that if a uh, combination of the, the content itself, the, the attitude uh, that it is contained in that content and the position it takes and the independence of it mean that no one else is actually providing that. Um, but I think overall this is going to be very hard. Mm. Uh, Laura Fay has asked, us, um, uh, she knows that the National Business Review has gone subscriber on online pay uh, in New Zealand, and that's created quite a negative reaction over there. Will audiences pay for online journalism? Well, I think you know some audiences may pay for it, but um, I think it's particularly hard where you've got content that uh, for a decade or more has been free and it's essentially the same kind of content that people have been used to getting for nothing um, to expect them to pay for it. And I think that's more about human nature, that if someone's been getting something for nothing for a long time, uh, why would they pay for it? Now, they pay for bottled water and they can get water free in the tap, so maybe there's some secret in that particular formula, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, but I think it is going to be very difficult. Uh, Jackie Crossman asks, um, how can Twitter maintain momentum when it doesn't have any funding source? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a really good question. Um, look, I think the point with all of this is that um, whilst Twitter is owned by a company and Google's owned, Google is obviously a public company, um, some of these innovations, I mean, the same argument could apply to Facebook. Uh, some of these innovations are essentially going to end up in the social media, uh, possibly the unprofitable or the break-even social media camp, uh, and that's fine. I don't think everyone should assume that everything that's created uh, has to make a huge profit. And uh, what often happens, uh, so for example, Google bought YouTube. YouTube doesn't make a profit, um, but Google can see ways of uh, leveraging the YouTube audience and brand uh, to gain benefits for Google. And I think uh, you might have a situation, and, and Twitter could well be one of those, where because of the audience size, um, because of the power of the, of the medium, uh, that it becomes a kind of loss leader for another um, media company. Uh, Karen Smith asks, um, do you think newspapers will become more of a discussion and analysis of why rather than of what? And this uh, this has been proposed as the saviour of, of newspapers in in-depth uh, analysis of the internet is more immediate and uh, of what's happening. Um, personally, I don't. I mean, I think they may try that, and they have been trying that, but I think the internet actually does provide uh, an enormous amount of that discussion and analysis, and because of the segmented uh, and, and depth uh, of the internet, you can actually get the analysis and the insights uh, refined right down to the subject categories you want on the internet in a way that no uh, bigger newspaper can ever provide. And so I think if uh, newspapers think that um, doing more analysis and commentary and that kind of thing is going to save them, personally, I disagree with that totally. Um, I think that, uh, for what it's worth, my own view is that the great um, strength of most newspapers is their, is their kind of roots and tentacles in their communities. And I think that uh, that kind of information, and I'm not necessarily talking about local councils, although I include that, but I'm not just talking about the absolute grassroots. I think uh, that is one of the great strengths of newspapers. And in cities like Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and whatever, if the local newspaper, quality newspaper, actually gave uh, a kind of thinking audience, which is big en a big enough audience, um, a true sense of what's going on in that city, not just 
uh, the car crashes and the police rounds and all of that, um, but a sense of the atmospherics and the power shifts and the personalities of that city. I don't think anyone else can do that, and I think that could prolong uh, the li life of newspapers, but um, we don't see much of that happening. Uh, Catherine asks, is it, is it possible to, to really have thoughtful commentary in an immediate online environment? Uh, well, I don't understand why why you can't. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, words on screens rather than words on paper. Uh, you can have unlimited length. You have the huge added value of being able to link uh, to other things. Um, to be able to add video links and audio links. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that I, I still uh, I still read the New Yorker, for example, in hard copy, uh, usually on aeroplanes, because I find it quite relaxing and, and the stories are quite long. Um, but if I've missed an edition or if there's an equivalent length story on some other website, I, I might print it out occasionally, but I don't have a problem about reading it online. Uh, Eric, um, uh, Simon Fitzgerald asks, what are your thoughts on John Hardigan's recent public commentary with regards to online journalism and bloggers, etc.? Well, I think that, you know, as I, as I said in my, in my discussion, um, and this is a whole unravelling, controversial uh, phase in the history of media and journalism, and there are always going to be all sorts of different points of view. Um, without referring specifically to, uh, to John's speech, I would make one point, and I'm sure uh, most people listening here would, um, would be aware of this anyway, but if you work for uh, a big media company, um, you uh, cannot actually go public uh, and talk about anything that is against the interests of that company and when you do go and give a speech or whatever, you actually are a spruker for that company. And so I think anything like that needs to be seen in that light as well. Uh, and I, I know that you've got your, uh, you want to leave the run the door three, so uh, there's one more question from Sally Edgar. Uh, is there a, uh, a diminishing audience for the detailed and insightful journalism versus headline snippets? I don't think there's a dim diminishing audience for it, but um, there is a, a very uncertain business model for it. Um, and the example I would use is, is non-fiction books. Non-fiction book publishing in this country and more broadly um, is and has been doing really well uh, for the past decade uh, and is doing well at the moment. And there are more and more good non-fiction books. And the reason I raise that is that people are prepared to pay for that information because it's high quality and they've always been used to paying for it. Uh, and so I think the appetite for that kind of information um, is as strong as it was. But when you have a medium like newspapers um, who have been giving it away for nothing and putting that kind of value stamp on it, then I think it's really difficult for them to turn around and start charging a lot of money. Okay, well, thank you, Eric, and thanks again to Premium Global for sponsoring this event. Uh, today's presentation will be available to members on our website in about a week. Uh, and just a couple of plugs. If you're in Tasmania, Victoria, or New South Wales and haven't registered for our international speaking tour with Mark Weiner, I encourage you to do so. Mark is uh, a global guru in PR, ROI, and measurement. And we're really getting some fantastic feedback from the sessions he's already done in Queensland and Western Australia. Uh, and a plug for Crikey. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to Crikey, as uh, Eric said, it's hundred fifty dollars And at the moment, they're offering a, uh, a, a deal where you get three bottles of wine from Secret Vines uh, for the annual subscription. So uh, if you want to go over there, there's the uh, web link. Uh, and just a final reminder that our next newsletter is on financial and investor communication. And if you're interested in submitting an article, please let me have uh, a, to drop me a line at information at PRIA.com.au. Thanks again for your attendance, and we'll see you soon. This concludes today's conference. Thank you all for your participation.